Scratchville. Um, okay, we're gonna, uh, in this last part, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna show you some chipping techniques. Now, a lot of people are using the hairspray te technique to do chipping now on even, uh, even regular finishes. Um, I still tend to lean toward the brush technique as, or as I, what I call as the traditional technique because I find it gives me a little more control. Now, can you go to the next one, Pete, please? Um, here's the base coat, okay? You see it's a little, you know, just a little bit of color modulation to get the volumes and stuff, but um, as I said, right here we've applied a dark yellow base coat. We've used different tones of Tamiya dark yellow, okay? Um, and when you're using different tones of Tamiya dark yellow, you can't really use a hairspray technique for chipping because you're just going to blend these colors and it's going to give you an odd effect. Okay, Pete. Um, okay. This is just where I drew out the camouflage, where I drew out with a pencil and a straight oh, edge. Oh, I see. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay, keep going. Just, you know, I'm just kind of showing you what I did up to the part where we'll go forward from. So you paint brush the yeah, uh, camouflage on? Yeah, the camouflage on by hand. You know, you usually thin down the acrylics and paint in a few layers. Is that Vallejo? Uh, that there, I think, is Vallejo. Okay. All right, Pete, thanks. Um, and then, a, a, all right, applying a coat of clear over it to give it all the, that give the, uh, the finish of the camouflage colors. In this case, I used a Creeps Marine color to give it kind of a different look from this paper panzer. To give it the same satin finish as the rest of the dark yellow base coat, which is where we are right now with this piece. We have a Tamiya finish here with Tamiya dark yellow, and we've applied a, um, a gloss coat over it using Tamiya clear. All right, next one, Pat. And uh, okay, yeah, keep going. That's just a finished camouflage. Step over here. That's just another view. So you painted on the camouflage with a brush for the effect. The yes, I did. Effect? Yeah. Wow. Okay, now we're at it. I just uh, just do. Um, you go back a little bit. It's good enough. I'll just. I can go back there. All right. I okay. figured it out. You did. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. All right, in here we just, um, I'm adding some pin washes to bring out these weld seams. All right, next one, Pete. Um, and cleaning off the extra excess uh, wash around the weld seams. And it's a great way, of, uh, pin washes applied in this air, uh, in this uh, method are a great way for breaking up parts in the front here and the sides. And uh, it, it's just, it's a great little technique, okay? It's just another view again. You can see how we use the pin washes here around these pieces here. It's just it, yeah, so who had the question on washes earlier? Washes and filters. I think it was a guy said that. All right, um, I'm sure he's listening um, somewhere. Uh, he was asking what the difference was. Right, and you can see where the washes are around these details, around this detail, the washes in here. That's what the washes are more for. They're to highlight seams and and rivets. And He's always told they, they call out the details. And the there you go. They add fake shadows. That's right. really what they and do. The, the they filters come, yeah. do the whole tonal value like of the subject. We did on that winter camouflage. Yes. Yeah, aren't, aren't washes also less diluted? Uh, yes. No, very good. Well, depends on the application. It can be yeah. diluted very less. Like those rust washes we put on there, that had much less thinner. Yes. Right. But um, uh, depending on the application, yes, that's a very good point. Okay. What am I doing here? Oh yeah, just adding oils. You can blend oil paints too. You paint them on by a brush. Then you can take a dry brush without any um, any thinner at all. Sean Lynch over here is doing a, more of a presentation on this uh, Saturday. And you can add more fake shadows to work in conjunction with the washes that you've seen brought out all these fine little details and everything. But it's also uh, adding a shadow behind the mail up there. Okay. Uh, and then here is just another example of using a light gray paint to add a bit of difference in tones between this plate and the top. And this is stuff, I'm not really going to go over this, but I want to just highlight some of this before we get into the chipping. Okay. Um, and again, even with the, like here, adding a darker, a darker gray over this bluish gray and a lighter white here, to, again, just contrast between the, the, two, the two details. Um, yeah, blending oils. You can see where uh, it's not very it's not very clear, but you can see where I've added small amounts of oils and I'm blending them just as a means to subtly 
blend the camouflage tones while adding more tones to the dark yellow. Uh, same thing here, you can see how using the oils, you can, that will work in conjunction with the washes to create big shadows around some of these parts. Here's where I just applied it by brush, but on this side here of the hatch, I've already blended it. So you can see the contrast of the hatch and the rest. Here you get the darker dark yellow from the oils, you got a, a bit of a lighter tone here, but even a lighter tone creating depth between the different extruding details and everything. Okay? All right, Pete. Okay, there's everything. Now we're, I think we're ready for chipping. I don't think I, I don't think there's anything else. Okay. Top of the gun, right? Uh, the top of the gun is Yeah, I, I airbrushed a light coat over that I could catch. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing. We got our piece here. Um, uh, we're going to start off by taking a sponge, very similar to what we did earlier, but this time we're going to be adding lighter chips of a lighter tone over the parts where we're going to be applying paint chips. Okay, so this is for making by adding uh, uh, lighter chips of the base coat, we're showing where the paint's been chipped away and worn away, but not quite down to the paint. Okay, so basically we're showing fresher areas of the base coat that haven't been weathered. Does everyone follow that? All right, all right, let's go forward. Now that's just how, how I hold the brush. And you can use tweezers if you want to. Now. What I'm going to do is we're going to take, after that, we're going to take some lighter acrylics and water them down real thin, thin them out, and we're going to go over where we've added all of our sponge chips to add some uh, larger, more controlled chips, okay? Again, this is where the base coat, the older weather base coat has been chipped away, showing, exposing the lighter, more uh, newer amount areas of the base coat underneath. And as you can see with chipping, it's like a, you can use it to add contrast amongst parts. You have more chips here, but less on here, and it just breaks the model and works with the uh, uh, the washes and everything. So now with the pointed brush, it becomes painstakingly slow. It does, but uh, you can, it, it doesn't, again, that's someone was saying earlier, you break your model down into imaginary parts, put on some headphones, have a mu music going or a movie going, and it's really a good, I like it. You lower the lights and put yeah, lights some candles. Well, that's and why. There you go. A nice have, you know, have an intimate moment, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going through, we're, we're adding, we're using a, a primer red, and this is the primer, the coat of primer underneath, and this is, where you can see where we got the base coat here, the chip base coat, and then the, the wow. primer red showing underneath. So we're working in layers. So you're, you're putting. I just want to get this straight. Yeah. So underneath yes. this kind of rust color. Well, the primer red, yeah. Primer color. Yep. And you bring it back in after. Uh, I bring it back in? Well, you, well I mean, obviously we would. I know we're doing it bass backwards. Yeah. But what it is is actually this is the newer one. This one's been chipped away. Right. That's a little lower, and then this is the chipped right down to the. Yeah, primer. that's what I'm trying to get the. the so we're doing it bass backwards. Right. I, I yeah, understand that. I'm just trying to get the, the feel fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Pete. Uh, just going a little further. Uh, you can also do the same thing. We're adding lighter gray tones over this um, light gray, this medium gray here. It's you got all the washes and everything, and the filter is on it. Now we're just adding lighter tones of where this part of the gray has been chipped, like I did with the winter camouflage. That little section I showed you where I added some white over the filter. Um, it's, it's a subtle effect, but it just makes it look worn and scuffed up. All right, pal. Uh, same thing. And again, uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Right. I'm that. sorry. Yeah, no, it's all right. Good board. Got go. away from it. Yeah, that does that. Um, Again, when, you put, when you're putting on the chips that are the deepest down to the, the primer coat, the metal coat underneath, you know, focus them more on the corners where it's going to be worn away by the crew or whatnot. And even here, um, you can see, you can use it to add contrast. It works with these welds and these dark washes to break up these two plates. Uh, over here on the front where it would probably be running into shrubs and things. Even up here with the plate, you can see how it breaks up the top plate here with this front plate over here. So uh, chipping can be used to add, uh, to distinguish parts from, or help distinguish parts from one another. I'm just going to show you today how to apply it. Um, okay. Thanks. Okay, now we're going to add some rust tones. When you add a light, okay, keep going. When you add a light, light tones of rust in this manner, you don't have to add <coughs> pigments. It will dry pretty mad when you use it in small amounts. And you can see it up here where I brushed it on. Let it dry like I showed you with the earth tones earlier. And on this piece, 
from here down, it's all blended. So it's working with the, it's like little rust areas working with the chipping, okay? So this is all kind of been blended, got some little rust tones, well this here still has to be blended, same with this and this. All right? So I have a quick question. Yeah. You're actually chipping the lighter color and the darker color are acrylic, whereas the rust is enamel. The rust is an enamel, yes, because it won't affect the acrylic, right? And plus I found when you're chipping, it, you can, um, as I'll show you in a minute, with some uh, with the Vallejo acrylics, when you thin them down water and you use a fine brush, that one's a Newton one, you can really get some fine, rigid looking chips and a pretty authentic looking. And again, here's, again, just adding more of the real slight rust tones around some of the chips and stuff like that. Did you seal the chips first? Uh, nope, you don't have to. No, I only, the only time I, to be honest, I really don't like applying extra coats of uh, uh, varnish, whether it's matte satin or glossy, unless I really need to. Where this whole thing was painted with a satin varnish, uh, I'm sorry, Tamiya 22 clear after the base coat to give it a satin varnish. And the chipping, as I'm using more matte tones, the same with the rust, the rust will dry matte and it will contrast nicely with the um, this rest of the satin varnish. When you're done, you can do the same thing. You can kind of tilt the piece and you'll see the differences in the, um, the chips. Okay, Pete. Um, uh, where did I show that picture? All right, go to the next one. Really? Uh, yeah, I, maybe, all right, can we go back? Um, I can do that now. Thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, when uh, I think when I'm, I'm I, why I put this here is when you're applying, I'll show, again, I'm gonna show you all this. When you're applying acry acrylics and making fine chips, um, Oh, what that is, is that's the rust tone. When you're, when you're blending the rust tones, you just want to wipe the excess away on a piece of paper as you're cleaning off some of the... <coughs> all right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, you're good. So you're yeah. trying to avoid making a, like a wash when you apply Exactly. It. You want to get the excess off. Yes, that's right, Sean. You want to keep a little bit on there to get that wash, but it almost works almost like a filter. It almost kind of carefully blends the, the, the red oxide with the lighter chips and the base coat. So I think that's what I've found. It really does more than anything. Okay, next one. I'm sorry. And you guys remember the speckling I did on the last one. You can do that here to get real fine, real fine rust spec if you do it in moderation. I'll, I'll show you that shortly as well. And again, just taking a step back, you can see where the oil paints here are blended to help <coughs> create contrast between this piece and that piece. And up here, the yellow with the lighter pop. It's just another little trick. And uh, some of the specs, when you, when you do the specs, it's kind of, I've never seen this thing so big before. Uh, when, you, when you do the specs, okay, in the places where they're too big, all you gotta do is just rush them down and just uh, <laughs> brush them down with thinner and get little runs. You can know, see it up around right here. Okay. Um, okay, more speckling, just again. Um, okay. Um, basically, that's basically the vehicle with all the chipping. Again, the, it's not the best image, but I'll show you how, and here's where I started weathering it. I don't know how much it, yeah, and there's the finished vehicle and all. I'll sort of play out. Yeah, yeah, I'll play out. It's pretty much done. So you left the uh, outline of your camouflage. Yeah, make, make it look uh, more hastily applied. Okay. Yeah, like the crew never had a chance to finish it. I we said um, the guy who helped me come up with the idea for that scheme. He said it's protecting a harbor somewhere, and it's got those creek marine. They painted it with the ship colors mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And there's more speckling effects. Yeah, I gotta That's all there is. Okay, let's get this one going here, and I'm sure you guys have to do more. Yeah, let me just uh, yeah do my little check.